morning everybody programming logic and we are continuing with strings we're going to learn one or two more things regarding it I want to start with a different angle so first of all I'm going to talk about classes and objects string is a class and we need to understand a little bit about classes a little bit light on in the semester we're going to work with classes and objects um, in detail but for now I want you guys to understand what is a class why do we use it because we're using the string class so a class is something that stores for me state and behavior let me explain that a little bit better the state is just fields, so for you, variables that we can access using properties. So if you think of, of the text box class, text box had quite a few different properties. Text was one. I could change the text of the text box by using the properties. So a class will, when I create something, it will store some fields for me. For now, the class just specifies what. The behavior would be things that the class can do. These would be the methods. So our string class, it's whenever it specifies the following. Whenever I want to use a string, there's some state. That would be the characters that we will store in the string so somebody's name a town's name anything like that string class have got only one property the length the how many characters and this would be then a read only property I can only get how many I can't go and change that and the string class have got lots and lots of behavior many different methods one example would be the substring method and there's two of them that are overloaded there's one substring method that just takes one parameter and another one that takes two parameters when we talk about classes we need to also talk about objects a little bit and my easy explanation of an object would be to say that it's a runtime creation of a class the more technical definition would be to say that it's an instance of a class. But that normally doesn't mean anything to you. If I say it's a runtime creation of a class, at runtime I take the class and I create an object from it. Pretty much exactly the same as what I would use a cookie cutter to create little biscuits, little cookies that all looks the same at Christmas time. Everything is like a hard or a store or something like that. Now, how does that relate to the programming that you're doing? As soon as I go and define a variable like this, dim name as string, for example, then I would create what is called an object reference. So this would be a variable that can store an object. And I've got that in inverted commas because I need to talk about it a little bit more. So dim name a string, then I use the class and I create a little cookie, a little biscuit, and I say, oh, you are called name. And now I can store some data in name. The moment that I do something like this, maybe I can get the data from a text box as well, eh? Then I create the actual object. So now I've got a string object that stores as its state Joe Modisi. So it stores inside it a variable. Okay, so can create a variable of the type that creates a reference. I can store some data. This the string class is a special class. It will create the object for me. Later on this semester, when we really work with classes and objects, you're going to see 
string is really special. This way of assigning data creates an object for me as well. So, what does this do in the memory before I get to the next point? The line that states dim name as string creates for me a reference. It's called name and initially it would say I'm not storing any data. As soon as I add a line like this, name equal to Sue, then Sue is created as an object, string object. It stores in it a variable, Sue actually, and the equal to, well that assigns the address and it sort of works like this. Name now says, if you want to use me, there you're going to find the data. Okay, so I've got name that stores some data, now it won't store null anymore, but the actual address where Sue would be located as an object. So this first block of mine would be the object. Let's maybe go color it in in a different color. I'm going to make it nice thick green line. That's my object. My object is the green block. Sue is stored in it. So Sue is stored in a variable, a field for the object. And name now says I know where to find it because we had a, this assignment over there. Stores the name. Lastly, we specified that strings are immutable. Now this is going to get a little bit you you need to get a little bit used to this fact. What this really means is that the methods won't change the actual string object data. The methods changes a copy of the data. Okay, so if I've got a little bit of code like this, dim name a string, assign suit to name, call to upper, and then display the name in a label. What would be displayed? Will it be Sue, or will it be Sue, <laughs> or will it be Sue, lowercase? Pause the video for a moment. Think about this. Now I've actually just added this as a comment because over here I've got some VB code. Eh? So what would be displayed in the label? Which one of these Sue versions will be displayed? And the answer is actually the first one. Even though we called to upper when I display the name as it is, Sue would be displayed like that. And the reason would be this immutable word. Okay, so let me go and explain to you why that happens. I'm just going to copy this, take it to my paint editor. Okay, so here we've got the code as we first discussed. We created a variable called name from the string. We've assigned sue to it. That's reflected on the left hand side. What does the two upper method do? First of all, it's going to make a copy. So it literally takes sue, makes a copy. And let's go and give this copy different color border. And then it says, okay, I'm the two upper method. So what do I do? I will store Sue in all capital characters. 
like that just change the color black like we've got that is the two upper method it did its job but then as soon as the method is gone the following happens whoop deleted from memory the last line would execute and name will display sue again that two upper method does its job but I never specified that the result must be saved. So what we need to do is the following. And now I've added the correct version in blue. I need to have told to upper. When you're done, save the name again. So now if the code executes, the name will create the reference. Su is equal to name will create the object and the reference stores the name. When to upper is executed now, it will make a copy. And let's go and give the copy this time around a blue border. To upper now does its job. So it says, okay, you want to take Sue. My job is to convert to uppercase. I do so. And now the equal to part. This part, oops, specified over here, says, save the result of the two upper method in the variable called name. That board would be deleted. And now that result will be saved. And if I go and display then thereafter the name in the label, the uppercase version of Sue will be used. When the method is done, it's actually going to delete the initial version of Sue from memory. So this part is really, really important. If you call some or another method, that result must always be saved. Easiest is to remember that these methods are functions. They return some data and I need to save it. This got a huge influence on development software not really for the programming logic part. Okay, but do remember strings are immutable. The copy won't be saved if I didn't specify it. And it's now me, the programmer's choice. Do I want to keep the original name? Then I need to save the result in a new variable. If I say, okay, oh no, I, d I don't need the original Sue that's partially lower and uppercase. I only want to work with the uppercase version. This part of the code is perfect. If I needed still the old version, then I would have had to use a different variable over here, not name, something else. Name to or name updated or something like that. Okay. So your choice depends on every program what you want to do, whether you want to save the name or not. Whether you want to save the results of the method. I've only shown you to upper but the replace method, the remove method, all the other methods works exactly the same. Okay, so recap this section quickly. We saw string as a class and it's got some funny things that we might not be used to yet. The most important thing is it will store some characters. For me it's got a property that's length, that's read only. I can only get the length, I can't change it. And then behavior. Many different methods. 
the most important thing is you need to be able to read the documentation the documentation will tell you what the parameters to the method will be used for what the method will return and then you need to remember that strings are immutable the methods will change a copy of the data and I have got the option to save the copy or update name new is equal to name dot to upper I can either do something like this this will take the name convert it to uppercase save the result in name new and now I've got two variables name that stores soon a new name that stores the uppercase version if I didn't worry about the previous version me I the programmer I've got an option to just say save the result of the two upper in the same variable in the effect I will update that and now sue in all uppercase will be saved in name okay so very very important it's got a huge influence on, on your programs not really the planning part but the actual VB code section which methods do you need to know I gave you a list of the important ones so all the others later if you need to use them you look in the documentation you figure out how to and then voila pops your uncle